Hello and welcome to our Tamiya TTO2 Type S race build from RC Empire. Now I know a lot of you have been waiting for our test runs and I promise these will come just as soon as our track dries out. But instead, in this video, we'll be having a quick mid build roundup and costing of all the components we have used and the sum up of the total cost of this build so far. We'll also be going over a few things we have learned about the car since our first video and at the end we'll be firing it up for a little static test. First of all, in the first episode from this series I said that this must be a protoform body but I couldn't find the model. In fact this is a Montec Nasda 4 190 millimeter polycarbonate shell and the one we have here with the paint stickers and foam body mount weighs in at 86 grams and you can buy this for around 22 pounds. Now onto the actual car. As you can see we have come a long way from our first video. This chassis is now packed full of exciting hardware which of course has made it a lot heavier, especially with this battery. So first of all, before we take a look at the hardware, if we get our scales out, we can see that the grand total weight of this car in its current form is 1.406 kilograms. So there's quite a bit of weight here. Now, another thing we were not sure of at the beginning of this video were the types of springs we have here. And after doing a bit of digging, we found that these are in fact the gold medium springs. So starting from the front to back, let's take a look at the components. So firstly, in this build, we have decided to go with the Contact RC37SH Jap Carbon Foam Tires, purchased for £5.18 a pair. And actually, I think these have gone up in price since we bought them. They are quite hard. And interestingly, someone told me that these metal backed stickers that we've put on the rims actually help increase their life by stopping big bits of rubber coming off them. So it will be interesting to see how these tires wear out. On the top here and getting to the real goodies, we have decided to go with the Savox SC1257 cordless digital servo or for £48.59. And this, as you saw in our installation video, is so quick and massively responsive to any input from the transmitter. And and under this bundle of wires, we have our receiver, the Futaba R304SB. As you saw in our fitting video, this receiver was included with the Futaba T3PV transmitter that we bought especially for this car. And this package with receiver and transmitter cost us £112.49. Moving on, for this car we have chosen to go with a Hobbywing XE Run power system. Specifically, the ESC we have here is a Hobbywing XE Run V3.1 and the motor is a Hobbywing V10 G2 10.5 turn. Now these are the single most expensive components from the build and were bought together as a kit and as you saw in our installation video came packaged together in a box. When buying this particular set you had the same V3.1 speed controller but you had an option of what motor rating you wanted in terms of the number of turns. Now this kit with both the motor and ESC cost us £189.99. So this is most certainly not a low-end kit, and I cannot wait to see what this can really do out on the track. And of course, you can also buy the Hobbywing programming box just to change drive modes, braking parameters, monitor temperatures, and things like that. What you also saw in the installation video for the motor was that the plastic plug socket for the motor sensor wire on the back of the motor was broken. And we will be showing you how to replace that in a future video, possibly before we go testing. Okay, so we spent a lot of money on this build and went with some high-end and very capable hardware. So we decided to go with a fully blown three yes battery just so we can show you guys the limits of this car its components and the hardware we have bought okay maybe we didn't need a massive 4500 mah battery but because we went all out with the rest of the build we thought we might as well go ahead and buy the physically biggest battery we could fit into the tto2 and it should give us excellent run times although bear in mind this does add a little extra weight bought for 44 pound 99 as you can see it's a hard case and it fits perfectly and easily into the battery tray of the TTO2. One thing I do want to show you quickly and something I explained correctly but showed incorrectly in our motor fitting video and something that isn't specified on the mounting instructions for the aluminium mount is the orientation of the motor mount. Now we are using a 22 tooth pinion on a 68 tooth spur so we need to put our screw into hole position 20. Now the hole position you need to use should be facing away from the motor so you should be able to read the number of the hole you need. So it should be as shown here not facing the other way around. 
And if we put everything back together, you can just see here, this gives us a much closer and perfect mesh. Although the way we did it before did work, the mesh was a little wider apart. And finally, what I also want to show you just before we start the car up is just how easy it is to damage the threads on this plastic chassis. Now I have been very careful every time I've taken this cover off and it's only been off a few times. But as you can see, the thread is damaged and the screw just keeps spinning in there, which is a real pain. Maybe whoever initially built this did something wrong and it was already weak, but do watch out for that. And that's it. As we start the car up, I'll tell you that including the initial car, a gear set and an aerial tube, adding everything up we have bought, this car has cost us a total of £555.65. And that is a lot of money. And we are not even finished with this build yet. Plus, if you add the cost of the upgrade parts that came with the car, as showed in our first video, like the aluminium shaft, the motor mount, high speed gear set, and the body, that adds another 115 pounds to the total cost, which luckily we saved on, but that takes the total cost of this car to around 670 pounds. Although the Tamiya chassis are relatively inexpensive, and you can get them running very nicely for a very reasonable price, if you are going all out like we have done here, you can end up spending some serious money. So I really hope this car performs outstandingly at the track, but it's been a great build and I know this will be a really fun car to thrash around. And these are still excellent beginner cars. And that's it for this video. I hope you have gained a quick overview of the components and cost of this car. If you want to use some of these parts for your own build, we will be back shortly with full test videos, hopefully before spring when the weather dries out, and we'll be doing a repair video for our hobby wing motor before we start upgrading this car to a whole new level. So please rate and subscribe and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching and see you soon.